Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be continuing on the abstract reasoning but this time I'm going to be doing some practice questions myself and sort of a work along thing. So the practice questions I'm going to be doing are from the official UCAT website, the Pearson View website. Um, it's not an official mock or anything so don't worry if you're going to do them sort of more towards your test time. It's just from the official question bank and yeah, so I'm going to try and talk through my thought process when I'm going through it. I'm going to try and talk through what I would do, what I would look for how I would do things and then at the end of everything I'm going to sort of remind you to put it into a Word document. So I will try and give you some time to pause it. Um, if I forget to give you time to pause it, pause it yourself and then maybe give the, give the question a try yourself, okay? So throughout the whole thing I'm going to be pressing Alt and N together to go forward. I'm going to be pressing Alt and F to flag and Alt and P to go back. So Alt and P is previous, Alt and N is next, and Alt F is flag, okay? <clears throat> right, already, first question, not gonna lie, this looks difficult. I'm gonna flag it straight away because it looks difficult. Um, as far as I can see, No, I'm not going to flag this one straight away because I know it's going to be quite difficult. I don't know why the Alt F isn't working on my keyboard right now. Right, next question back. So we've got set A, set B. So set A has a, a black square straight above it and the black circle goes to a white circle and then the white circle goes to two things. Right, okay. And then set B, the grey goes to two things. Right, okay, so I've got this straight away. So. It all starts with a black a black square, as you can see. It goes down to a white circle, and it, then it goes down to a grey circle. The grey circle will then only go to one thing, and then a white circle will go to two things. Uh, yeah, that's right, and then set B it goes to two. That's fine. So now it's a switch of the following test shapes belong in set A. So then set A, we're going to look for the grey to go to one and the white to go to two. So that looks like A. And then at this point, we know what the pattern is. So the next sort of five questions or however many questions it is in the, the specific set, we know what the pattern is already. So it should actually be really quickly. It, I mean, we should get through it really quickly. So the, I think towards the, the end stages of my study, I was getting like three or four seconds per question just because you do sort of know what, what the pattern is. You don't have to sit and think about it. So this one's asking for set B. So in set B, we're looking for a grey that goes to two, so it looks like that, and a white that goes to one. Yep, that's right. Set A, we've got this one here, I think. Yep. Set B, so we've got grey going to two, white going to one. Right. Set B again. Right, there we go. Right, so this one, this is more like what you'll get in the exam. It's simple, but it will have a pattern to it. So in situations like this, the main thing I'll do is I'll count straight away. <clears throat> there is a sort of, um, I think it's an analogy. There's an analogy for quantity, uh, what's this? The, uh, for abstract reasoning and the, the sort of ways that you should look through things. It's not really worth learning the, the, the full thing. I think straight away in situations like this, the first thing that I would do is I would count the number of everything. So we've got one, two in set A, one, so we know it's not odd or even straight away. We've got, then I would sort of count colours. So we've got one, two white things, another white thing here. So we know that it's not, for example, even numbers of white shapes. Um, And so, so then at a point like this, what I would do is I would look out, I would look at both set A and set B. So straight away what I can see is in set A, there is only curved shapes. And in set B, we've got only shapes with straight edges. As you can see, pretty much there's no, yeah, there's only curved edges, only circles. And then in set B, there's only straight edges, things like triangles, arrows, weird shapes like this. Okay, so in set A, I would say straight away that this is set A. Yeah, correct response is A. 
So then in here I would say straight away is B. I would say there's only curved edges here, so I would say A. Uh, wait, I think I got that one wrong. Oh, yeah, only, yeah, only curved edges, so it's an A. Only curved edges again, so it's an A. Here we've got one straight and one curved, so I would say neither for that. Okay, here. Hmm. This one looks quite tricky. So straight away, what I'm doing now is I'm counting. <coughs> I'm looking for odd or even straight away. So for set A, maybe say circles. So one, two, one, two, one, two, no. Okay, so it's not an even number of circles. So it's not two circles per square. So then the next thing I would look at here, because again, the thing I've done straight away after counting odd or even is I've looked out and I've zoomed out at set A and set B. In set A, I can see a majority white shapes. In set B, I can see a majority of black shapes. Actually, so what I can see now after looking at that and going through that rule in my head is I can see when it's an X shape like this in set A, it's white. And then in set B, when it's that shape, it's all black. So then with test shape over here, I would say it's A because when it's an X like this, all the shapes are white. And in set A, when it's like that, there's different coloured shapes and the same thing in set B when it's like this it's going to be black shapes but when it's like this it's going to be a mixture of shapes so that's me got that rule there I'm pretty sure so here I've got all white shapes so and it's in an X I think this is going to be neither yeah this is going to be neither because if it was like this and it would be all the same shape it would be black because it would be in set B here we've got a cross which is a different shape and it's that way so it's going to be a B a and this is going to be B and in questions like that previously there can sometimes be additional rules put on top so for example if I go back a question here it could be for example something like they could there could be some weird rule on top of it like no arrows should be on the same thing but see if you have a basic rule and it follows through for most of these things just go with the basic rule because you are guaranteed to get maybe out of the five I'd say maybe two or three Right, so in this one, so this is one of the, the questions that essentially involves a different series. So we've got one, two, three, and four here. So in the first one, um, what I like to do is I'd focus on one specific part of the box. So for example here, I'll, what I'll do is I'll focus on this black square here. So in the second box, I can see that the black square goes from the top down to the bottom. Then in the third box, it stays at the bottom. And in the fourth box, it goes back up to the top. So then from this pattern, what I would think is it's going to stay at the top again because it goes up, down, down, up, up, down, down. I think that's what the pattern does with the, the black square at the top here. Then what I would look at next is, say for example, the white, the white circle. I can see this pattern already. The white circle here and I can see it on the left, then I can see it at the, the top and I can see it at the right, then I can see it at the bottom. So then we know in the next one it's going to be back where it started on the left. So, so far we've got two things here, so then we can look at the answers and see if any of this fits together and I can see that it does. So we've got the black square staying at the top, we've got the white circle staying at the left, so I would say it's C. Yeah, correct response C. Right, this one. So this, so I would say when you get a, sort of a thing like this and you have a lot of different scattered shapes throughout a box, straight away I think it's got to be something to do with odd or even or it's got to be a total number. So say for example, there will always be two black shapes and always three white shapes or something like that. When, especially when there's a mixture of colours, definitely look at the number of the shapes in the thing. So straight away I can see three black shapes, three black shapes, three black shapes, three black shapes, three black shapes. So if I set A, it's going to have three black shapes in it and set B, it's going to have two black shapes in every box. So set B, because obviously it's got two black shapes. This might also be a thing where there's a total number of shapes. So sometimes they can add in another rule. Um, there's six in every box here. Yep, there's six in every box everywhere. Yep. So six everywhere, it's going to be set B. We've got six numbers total. We've got two black shapes. I would say set B as well. Set B as well. Set A because there's three black shapes. And there's only one black shape here. So what I would say is neither. 
Right. So this is another one of the sort of series questions where you get a different series of questions throughout every box. Right. So what I'll do is I'll start with the middle arrows. So I can see that there's one black arrow at the bottom and then there's two black arrows. Then there is one black arrow at the top and then there's two black arrows. So then straight away what I would say is the next one's got to have a black arrow at the bottom. So then from that we can look straight at the answers and we can see it's got to be now either A or D. Then with the other out, outer arrows that are sort of pointing towards the middle, all these ones around here, I can see that the black arrow is at the bottom left, then it goes to the top left, then it goes to the middle right, and then it goes towards the bottom left again. So I think it's jumping two every time, it's missing one, and then, yeah, so it's missing one. So we can see it starts here, misses one, goes to the next one, misses one, goes to the next one, misses one, goes to the next one. So then it's got to be not that one, it's got to be that one with the black arrow back at the top. Right, so this is a different type of question now where it sort of applies a rule to the boxes on the left and then you have to sort of take this rule, extrapolate it and then put it on the bottom. So, we can see straight away the main thing is all the arrows change direction, they reverse. So on the bottom one we're going to have an up arrow, a left arrow and a down arrow. An up arrow, left arrow and a down arrow, up arrow, left arrow and down. Right, so that rules out A, so it's now got to be B, C or D. Then what we've, we've got is the middlemost shape, so we've got a triangle, inverting, so turning down, and then inverting colour as well. So then we're going to have this, we're going to have this weird sort of four-sided shape, turning upside down and going white. So it's got to be either this one or this one. Then. And then we can see the next most shape, which is a circle, uh, on the on the top one, sorry, we've got a square, and then it does nothing. It still stays in the middle. And then we would look out again, and then we can see that a triangle, so the innermost shape then becomes the outermost shape. Hmm. And it stays the same, so we've got to have a black one, so it's got to be that. Because we can see that the shape here is a white triangle, it goes out to the outermost one, it stays a white triangle. Here we have the black four-sided shape and then it's got to be the outermost black so, um the outermost shape now b yeah that was right i don't know how i can still do this all right we've got the same type of question here again where we've got the sort of the rule that applies to the top row and then we apply it to the bottom row so here what what can we see we've, we've got three circles in the middle and then the circles then go to the outside i can see the black circle in the middle then moves one to the left or sort of goes in an anti-clockwise direction, sorry. Then I would do this with the triangles at the bottom, so it's got to be the rightmost triangle, so it's got to be straight away, we've narrowed it down to one of two things, C or D. And then what we've got is the square and the circle, the circle then goes inside the square. So essentially what all that's happening here is the circles in the middle are swapping with the big outer circle. So then here we've got this, we've got another square here, and then we've got the outermost square. Yeah, so it's this one here, because down here we can see the outermost is black, it goes in and it goes white. Here we've got an outermost white, it's got to go in and go black, because it'll invert the colour. So then we've got an innermost circle, uh, an innermost square here that's going black, and we've apply applied the rule anti-clockwise to the triangles in the middle. Let me just see if that was right. See, yeah. Right. Here straight away I can see symmetry. Um, I mentioned in the abstract reasoning video I did previously, um, if you haven't seen that I would go and watch that. In the one minute before the abstract reasoning would start I would write down every single sort of formula or every single pattern sorry that I'd encountered quite commonly throughout the practice and one of these was symmetry. So straight away from doing that even a year on from doing the exam now I can see symmetry I can see the symmetry straight away. So <coughs> On set A, what we can see is a horizontal line of symmetry. Um, if you almost imagine a ruler going through the middle of all of these boxes horizontally, we can see that it reflects exactly on it. In B, we've got a vertical line of symmetry straight down the middle. This is going to be neither, I think. Yeah. Because it's 
this has two lines of symmetry where it's inverting sort of horizontally and vertically. Here we've got a set A because it's horizontal. Here we've got set A as well because it's horizontal. Here we've got set... I think this is neither. Wait. Yeah, neither. Because it just looks a bit weird there. And this one we have got set B. So I don't have the answers on this because it doesn't really mark it while you're doing it. But what I will do is I'll stop there. Um, I'll see how this video does. If people do watch this and they want another one, let me know. This website has free question banks. It's just the official UCAT website. I can do it with any of the um, any of the question banks. I can do it with further abstract reasoning if people are struggling with that. I can do it with verbal reasoning, decision making, quantitative reasoning, blah, 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 blah. If you'd like that, let me know. Let me know how you found this in general because it's the first video I'm going to do where I'm going to try and edit these two together. And yeah, just let me know if it's been helpful because I do appreciate the, the feedback and the comments that I have been getting. I have been reading them and I have been liking to see them. So let me know how this has been. Um, let me know if you'd like another one. And thanks for watching this one.